Hello everyone. Uh, <clears throat> in this video demonstration, I'm going to show you how to perform the waves lab. This lab has two parts. The first one is water wave simulation. I'm going to show you this one first. Again, uh, to do it first, you open the link. Then click on run now. Just as usual, the Java package starts. Okay, now we have the uh, user interface to show you uh, how to run this particular lab. Let me move this one away and show this. So according to the instruction, if you read through the instruction, so what you need to do first is change the frequency and amplitude both in the middle and you can see the water droplets uh, makes the water wave right here and if you click on show graph it also shows the uh, side view of the wave <coughs> you can also show a measuring tape and immediately you have a measuring tape right there you can grab it and measure it whatever the way you want just like you the way you use a measuring tape and you can also get a detector uh, to this measures the uh, the bottom here is time measured in seconds so it shows in one second how many waves has passed at this particular location right here okay so with both we can do the uh, simulation so first grab both outside of the way um, what you want to do is first pause it now you can show this on the side view or you can measure the wavelength directly here so let's just actually do the first method is showing the uh, lab manual so you rotate a view okay now <coughs> what's shown here is basically a side view just like the graph at the bottom so you can just use this to measure the wavelength so Wavelength, by definition, is the distance between crest to crest or from trough to trough. So just pick two points that are the same. So I am going to pick between crest to and crest. So here is the crest. And here is my second crest right there. So in my case, uh, a little bit coming a little bit more. So in this case, the wavelength is 1.70 centimeter okay so we have measured the wavelength the next thing you want to measure is the uh, frequency and to do that we want to use the uh, detector here so let's rotate it back to the original view and let's play and again you show it shows the waves going around here right okay after you have some nice wave here pause it and again uh, <clears throat> based on what we have learned frequency is how many w complete waves in one second so here is from one second from 91 second to 92 second right here and you can see from 91 to 92 it has one complete wave but more than that so there's half here half there right so this is where it actually f finally finishes and you can tell here in this one second from 91 to 92 seconds this one se uh, one second there's one half waves so the frequency in this case should be 1.5 Hertz so putting those data in your data table um, so <coughs> wavelength the first one is 1.70 frequency is 1.5 Hertz and immediately you can calculate the wave speed and then once you've done that you can then continue to work on this let it run and change the frequency to either far left actually I'm sorry I think this there's a typo here uh, it's not far left it should be left about a quarter of the total scale so not far left so move it about a quarter scale right roughly here so you can actually see the whole wave going on here 
and then you can you should be able to measure the uh, wavelength and frequency like we just did and just pay attention now now it's very slow and you can see in one second it's actually less than one wave so what you want to do is look at how actually how long it takes actually for one complete wave so if you look at the complete wave for this one it starts the peak is right here about 132.5 in the middle and finish at 134 so the period now is 1.5 second and then frequency we have talked about that <coughs> in the lecture not in the lecture in the uh, handout that frequency is 1 over the period so the frequency now is 1 over 1 1.5 it's roughly 0.6 uh, second I'm sorry 0.6 Hertz that's the frequency and the period is 1.5 second okay that's all I want to talk about for part one now let's talk about the second part standing wave explorations in this part of the lab you are going to observe quite a few different wave patterns uh, wave phenomena, including reflection interference and standing wave again um, press the control key and that should bring you to this uh, web page <coughs> let me move this one away click wrong wrong now and immediately we have this simulation web page right here uh, <coughs> The instruction of how to run this lab is pretty straightforward. Um, make sure you follow those instructions precisely. So first is we're going to observe the reflection. To do that, you need to set the simulation. Uh, I'm going to just call it sim for short. To pulse mode, so pulse mode is right here. And we also want to be the fixed end. So you have three choices here, fixed end, loose end, and no end. So let's use fixed end for the first time. Uh, we need to send the damping to be zero so damping is right here you can either use this or you can just change the number directly there so zero uh, tension should be high so tension is high that's fine now what you can do is you can send a single pulse and you can see what's going to do so if you want to send a single pulse press the pulse button right here and you immediately see send a pulse and you can see the uh, this single pulse moves back and forth on this uh, string now so reset and that stops it so that's the first part then on the second step what you are going to do is exactly the same but the only difference is set it to be loose end and same story you send a pulse and you observe again uh, write your observations in the uh, lab write up and finally reset it no end you can see here this string keeps going on then send a single pulse and observe what happens okay let's op reset again so that's for the three reflection uh, steps after that what we're going to observe is the wave interference patterns again set it to the simulation to be just as step one that is pulse and fixed end uh, when you do this part be careful because uh, it asks you to send this you are going to send two pulses the second pulse should be at the time when the first pulse is about halfway through so you set first send the first one send the second one and you're going to see these two pulses interference with each each other uh, and that is what I want you to observe and you can see it goes pretty fast and uh, you can pause it and then step through the phenomenon and to see have a better understanding what is really going on or you can just play it quickly okay let me reset this one so that's for step four step five is still the very similar the only difference is now is that this side to be loose end and again we're going to send two pulses so first send first one second one 
And again, we're going to observe the wave interference pattern here. Again, you can pause it and step through it and really observe how the waves are interfering with each other. Okay, let's reset. The last part of this simulation is about standing waves. Uh, you have learned in the textbook, standing wave is basically when a wave interfere, interferes with the reflected wave of itself. Uh, eventually you will see a pattern that is as if the wave is not moving. This pattern is called standing waves and we are going to demonstrate demonstrate this phenomenon by the simulation. So again, follow the uh, instruction in the, in the uh, lab manual. Uh, reset the simulation and switch to fixed end <coughs> and also change your um, mode to os oscillate. Change your amplitude to 10, your frequency to 15, and your damping to 5. And after a while, you will see this pattern right here. As you can see this pattern going on here, this point at here is always, always have big uh, amplitude and it's not moving, it's just going up and down. And this point right here, roughly in the middle, there's no much motion at all. And again, there's another point right here has the maximum amount of motion. The point that roughly there's no motion, we call this point a node, N-O-D-E. And these points where there are maximum amount of motion, we call them anti-node. So here's one anti-node, here's the other. So in this particular pattern, there's one node and two anti-nodes <coughs> under uh, frequency of 15. Now, if you change the frequency to 25, so as you can see, this goes up much faster. Now, after a while, you are going to see a new standing wave pattern. And this time, you can see here, again, this node, I mean this point, sorry, uh, there's not much motion uh, moving forward, but yet it had, vertically, it has the maximum amount of motion. So again, this is your anti-node, and this point is your node, because roughly there's no motion. The motion is very small here. Again, here is your anti-node, and here is your node again, and here is your anti-node. So in this particular case, we have one, two, three, three anti-nodes and two nodes. Uh, so what the <coughs> lab manual going to ask you to do is to uh, continue the simulation, find other frequencies, and you can find other standing wave patterns. This is called a standing wave pattern. Okay, the second part of this is you are going to change the simulation to loose end. Now it's fixed end, right? Now when you choose to, it to loose end, it's going to have a different pattern. So I waited to for a while to settle. And you can see here, now also it's 25 uh, hertz as before, but the pattern is different. Uh, right now, because the amplitude is small, it's not very obvious. You can change the amplitude. Say I change it to 20. And again, you can see under 25 hertz, there's one node here another node here, and another node here. So this time there are actually three nodes, but there's only two anti-nodes here, one in the here and one in here. Okay, that's all for uh, this lab. If you have any question, that please email me back. Thank you.